The Golf 1 came equipped with a Blaupunkt radio as an option. It produces a mono output and has three band selectors. There's also an input for a tape player. That's all. We asked an expert to tell us more. In contrast to modern radios, there isn't any tuning memory. That is, I can only mark the stations with small sliders and then adjust my frequency manually. The Golf 2 saw the arrival of the Volkswagen Gamma Radio. It was much more user-friendly and was available with different options. This radio was about 10 years further on in design and technology. There's certainly a lot more modern feeling, and it features an LCD display to show the frequency. Not yet station names like modern radios, just the FM frequency. The Golf 3 still featured a tape player as an updated Alpha radio system. It delivered a 2 times 20 watt stereo and had an integrated dashboard design. The Golf 4 took a great leap forward. For the first time, you could get navigation integrated into the system as an option. The RCD300 in the Golf 5 features a CD drive. The cassette player has disappeared, marking the beginning of the multimedia infotainment system. When you look at how far the radio has come from analog to digital, you really get a sense of just how far cars have progressed. The radio in the Golf 6 has transformed into what we would now recognize as a modern multimedia navigation device. It has a touchscreen, and the CD drive has been replaced with one that reads DVDs as well. The Discover Media system in the Golf 7 is another significant step forwards. Proximity sensors, DAB+, 3D map display, Bluetooth telephony and an optional Wi-Fi hotspot are all on board. In November 2016, gesture control for the infotainment system premiered in the Golf. The Golf remains the technological leader of its class and, of course, the current Golf still features a radio.